Hey there, we are so thankful that you have made the choice to watch one of ACC's messages online. You know, as you are watching and diving into the truths that are being shared, we challenge you. You're sitting at your phone or your computer, hop on social media and be sure to use the hashtag you belong at ACC as God is teaching you different things during this message. But you know, we say you belong at ACC and we truly mean that, which means we would love to have you join us during one, our, one of our Sunday services at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. here at 710 Aqua Heart Road. So we would love to have you jump into this message and we're believing God is gonna do some awesome things in your life today. All right. Hey everybody, how are we doing this morning? Hey, my name is Dustin Pete. I get to serve as one of the pastors here today. And before we get started, there's a couple people online and in the room that I just want to say hello to and welcome them, my family at home. Um, my kids are not feeling well, and so they're watching online. I want to tell them hello and that daddy loves you, and I hope you feel better, and I'll be home in a little bit. I also want to say hi to our pastors, Chris Comstock, uh, who is traveling as well, and Matt Osdall also traveling um, thanks, guys, for letting me be up here today, and I'm excited to do that. Also, in the room today, we have a special guest. I just don't want to, like, over, like, embarrass him or whatever, but former pastor uh, Brian Hamilton is with us today as well. Yeah. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> Lucky me, I'm the one that he gets to watch, right? That's awesome. Thank you, Chris and Matt, for putting me in that position. Super appreciate that. Hey, uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to point out something that we, we might have all just recently experienced. Uh, over the holidays, there's a lot of Christmas parties to go to. There's a lot of get-togethers to be a part of. There's a lot of things to travel to. And in that, we might meet some people that we've never met before. And, or we met some pe- meet some people that we haven't seen in a really long time. And those interactions can be super awkward, am I right? You go in for a handshake, and they give you the fist bump, and you got this thing going on, or you lean in for a hug, and they weren't ready for it, and they just kind of stiff arm you like this, or you weren't ready for the kiss that they leaned in for, and you went this way, and they landed it right on your lips, and that gets real weird, right? <clears throat> you have no idea what to do in those situations, am I right? Check out this video to see more of what I'm talking about. G promo 126. It's weird. What do I do with my arms? I've never thought about that before. Is it this? Or, if I may, this? Maybe I should just hold something. Okay, yeah, this feels more natural. Is that right? Yeah. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. Uh, it'd be good just to hold them down by okay. your side. Yeah, great. Well, we were real happy with, um, with what was going on. And uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, you got to be happy. Everything ended up fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, okay, everything was fine. Thanks. Thanks. Great job, Ricky. Good job in the car. Ricky Bobby, a force to be reckoned with possibly in the near future. And I know that each church has its own worship style, you know, which is cool. Some people are more expressive in worship, some people more subtle, and it's all good. Um, I go to a church that's pretty expressive in worship. It's, um, it's a hand-raising church. That's what it is, right? That's what, you know, anybody here go to a hand-raising church? Am I here? Sweet. Who here does not go to a hand-raising church? <laughs> Some of you are trying, you're like, I can't. I want to, Tim, I need to get some momentum. <laughs> totally cool. But hey, if you're not used to going to a hand-raising church, you wanna go and join us. Feel free to join us, but don't feel like you gotta join right in, okay? Start slow. We got a lot of different hand raises that we use. We actually have names for our hand raises. So I'm gonna walk you through real quick, okay, what they are, just to let you know. Say you're at my church, music is rocking. Start slow, hands in the pockets, little elbow flap, you're fine. Very subtle, get warmed up, get your heart rate up. When you're warmed up, start with the first one. Ready, carry the TV. Carry the TV, that's our first one. Very subtle. Go to big screen, big screen, a little wider. Next one's my fish was this big, my fish was this big. If you're a liar, you can go out there, that's fine, don't worry about it. Jesus loves you, Grace. Next one's hold my baby, hold my baby. Got dueling light bulbs, that's our next one, dueling light bulbs. Got goalpost, everybody knows goalpost. 
throw in a heartburn. A lot of people like to do heartburn. Double heartburn, right back to go post. What's my favorite? Mufasa. Mufasa, that's my favorite. The circle of life. Tim, can you go higher? Yes, you can. You can take one hand, go a bunch of different stuff. Pointer, hatchet, schoolroom. Release the doves, give the Lord a high five. Press it out. A lot of women like to wash the window. Wash the window. <laughs> and when you're comfortable there, go for the big three. Village people, Rocky, touchdown. There you go, there's your big three. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Hey, the point is, is that every scenario that we encounter in life, it emotes some type of physical response. Are there any Ravens fans in the room or watching online with us? Yeah, I'm excited for you. I'm a Redskins fan. We're just hoping to lose today so that we can get a decent draft pick and continue on our sorrows for many years to come. So if you're a Ravens fan, you know that this year, whether you were in the stadium or watching on TV, you know that when uh, your team did well, uh, it, it emoted something from you, right? You cared so deeply about that team and that moment that when they did well, you had no other option. It never even, never even occurred to you uh, to do anything else but to stand up and shout, and hoot and holler and clap and high-five your friends or the invisible friend that you have that's watching the game with you or whatever, and you're just so excited because of what your team is doing. Am I right? And so what we see there is that every time something happens that we care about, that's important to us, a natural physical response happens. And this is, this is not new. We've seen this uh, since the dawn of man, since, since very first creation. If we look back in the, in the book of Genesis, we see that when Adam learned that he was naked, he was afraid, and what did he do? He hid, right? He hid because he was embarrassed, and he was afraid of God seeing him that way, and he was afraid of anyone else seeing him that way, which is kind of weird because there weren't too many people around, right? But he was afraid, so he hid. And so that's the physical response happened. Fast forward a little bit to the first ever Passover, and we see that, that the Israelites, after the first Passover happened, they were so thankful that they were still alive and that God did what he said he was going to do. And he, and he, provi he provided for them and he, he protected them. That what did they do? They didn't even think about it. They immediately bowed down and worshiped God. Fast forward to the New Testament. And we look at the life of Jesus. And Jesus had a really great friend uh, that he cared deeply about. And his name was Lazarus. That's a really cool name, right? If you're looking for a baby name, you might want to consider that one. So his friend, Lazarus, passed away unexpectedly. And he was, he was really torn up about it. And many of you in the room, you've, you've experienced loss. Maybe even this year, maybe this very month or this very week, you have experienced loss. And you know what happens in that moment, it's the same thing that happened to Jesus. Jesus found out, it's one of my favorite verses because it's easy to memorize and I don't have a really good memory. And you could just say, look, this, one of these verses, it just says that when Jesus found out about his friend that died, he wept. He wept over his friend. He didn't think about, I wonder if I should cry or not. I wonder if this is a good political move for my campaign right now. If I should cry or if I should just stand firm and maybe they need the strength right now. Maybe they need the weak thing right now. I don't know. He didn't think about any of that. Being fully human in that moment, he wept for his friend that passed away. You see, everything that we do in life has some type of physical response associated with it. And what I'm really getting at after here today is specifically in our worship. Now, if you were a part of that Ravens game, whether you were watching on TV uh, or in a stadium, or maybe you're like, hey, sports isn't my thing. Maybe you went to a really good restaurant over the holidays, or you finally got your mom's home cooking after a long time, or your grandmother's or whoever, and you're like, this is the best meal that I've ever had, and you just pushed the plate away from you when you were done, and you stood up and you just gave them one of these. <laughs> and you're like, that wins every time. I want more of that in my life. Whatever the case is, what you care about emotes that physical response. And what we're talking about here today is this word that the Bible uses called worship. 
And essentially all that worship boils down to, we see it every day, all day, all over the place. Essentially all that worship boils down to is your response to what you deem as worthy enough for a response. That's it. If it's worthy enough to you, you subconsciously respond in a way that exudes some type of physical uh, happening, some type of physical movement. All right, your, your, your team scores the touchdown, you stand up and you clap and cheer. If the ref makes a bad call and you're angry about it, you yell at him through the TV screen, which I don't know why you do that because he can't hear you. And he's just going to keep making bad calls anyway. It's the NFL, folks. Let's get over it. Listen, every time something happens in your life that you deeply care about, you respond in a certain way, that's worship. We see it all the time. Things go your way, you're excited about it, and you tell everybody about it. Things don't go your way, and you react a certain way. That is worship. And we're talking about it specifically today in the context of your relationship with God because we believe, at this church and as Christians, we believe that your relationship with God should mean more to you than anything else. In fact, the Bible calls anything else that you put above your relationship with God, they call it an idol. It means you're worshiping something else that doesn't, that doesn't need to receive that praise or that high priority or that high ranking for you in your heart and in your mind. And we see that, right, folks? Every single day, we know what it's like. We know what it's like to be in a situation and say, I'm giving my worship to this thing. Now, here's the kicker is that it's not something that you think about consciously, but it's something that just happens immediately. And that comes out of your heart. And what I want to talk about today is summed up in a great quote from a guy named Bob Coughlin. Bob Coughlin is a worship pastor, actually right here in the state of Maryland, one of my favorite um, authors as well, and he wrote this. He says, listen, worship of God was never meant to be mere intellectual engagement with biblical truths. Now, if you're like me, you're like, Paul's, that's a lot of big words. I don't know what he's saying. There's a reason he's an author. He has to use those big words to get his word count up so that his publisher is happy, right? So if you're like me, I'm like, I don't know what really what that means. And what he's saying is that worship of God is not meant to be this thing that you just engage with up here. That you go, okay, I know that about God now. Good to know. I, I read that in the Bible now. I'm, I'm glad that I did that. I came and I sat here and I mumbled my way through some songs that I didn't know. And I laughed at the pastor's bad jokes. And I feel good about myself. And now I'm going home and it's all up here. He says, look, worship is never meant to be that way. Nor is it limited to an inner emotional response. You might come here uh, on on any given week or maybe even today and and a song might hit you the right way or a point that the pastor makes might hit you the right way or a video story that we tell you about someone's life being changed or you watch a baptism and you're moved to tears. Or you watch that video that I showed you earlier and you're moved to laughter and you're like, "I, I feel good. I'm glad I came today. I had some type of emotional engagement about what was happening in the room today. And so therefore, I checked the box of what worship is. He said it's not limited to that. God created our bodies to glorify him. We see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. He says, We aren't pursuing a Gnostic spirituality that downplays or negates the importance of the body in true spirituality. God commands us to love him with all of our what, church? Heart, soul, mind. And what's the last one? Strength. With all of our strength, and you might be thinking to yourself this morning, I, I, I've been beaten up. 2019, I look back at and I'm just like, why did you do that to me? What's the deal? And you're out of strength. You're completely physically depleted of any, of any type of physical response at all. And this message is for you today. And he goes on to say, God commands us with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. That certainly includes the bodies that he's given us. Look, folks, there are many different ways to worship. If we walk through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, we can see all types of worship that God's people have done to him or that, have, that have, they have given to him uh, over, over the time of creation. But there's one specifically I want to talk to you about today, and that is surrender. 
Now, surrender is a funny thing, right? We see that uh, the, the, the international pose. Everybody kind of knows that if you put your hands up like this, that means you surrender, right? Surrender means, look, I have no more moves left to make. I've reached a dead end. I'm completely out of options. I give up. Clearly, I'm defeated. I've lost. This is over. And that's the international sign of defeat, right? Maybe you have been in a conver- uh, an argument before at home with someone that you, they, they, that you love, and it's a private argument, and, and it gets so intense that you just go, you know what? I can't. You know what surrender feels like. It feels like defeat. It feels like you have no other options. Let me tell you today, I want to give you three things that the Bible says that surrender is, that we often think that it is, but it's actually not. And the first thing is this. Surrender, surrender is not giving up. When we put our hands up like this, and you see people in worship here uh, on Sunday mornings, and you see people around that are putting their hands up, there's, there's no one behind them with a gun, okay? They're not running from anyone, okay? What's, it's not giving up, but instead what they're doing in that moment and what we're encouraging you to do in your relationship with the Lord is to not give up, but instead use that physical response to trade up. Surrender is not giving up. Surrender is trading up. And here's what I mean by that. Everyone in this room has a plan. Whether, you, whether you're a planner like me and you got your spreadsheets and your calendars and all your devices and everything uh, laid out and your trapper keeper and your three-ring binder and everything is going the way that you, you exactly planned out. You go on vacation you have every second of that thing planned out. Or maybe you're not like that at all and you're just like, you know, in my mind it's going to be this way and it's going to be fine when I get there and whatever happens, it happens. That's your plan. Even a lack of plan is a plan, right? Everybody has their own plans in life. In fact, this morning when you got here, you had an idea, an expectation in your mind of what it was going to be like when you came in here. I'm going to smile at a couple people that I don't know on the way in. I'm going to shake their hand and pretend to know their name. I'm going to come in here and sit down, and I'm going to mumble my way through a few songs that I don't know. I'm going to listen to some bad jokes for a little while. I'm going to do a little bit more of the mumbling through songs, and then I'm going to leave, and I'm going to feel better about myself. If all those things happen, I feel good. That's your expectation. That's your plan for when you come into a place like this. And it happens not just in church. It happens at work right? I'm going to go to work, and I'm going to do this thing, and because I did this thing, my boss is going to notice me, and I'm going to get promoted, and my life is going to be great, and I'm going to have the big house with the picket fence and the two and a half kids and the whole nine, right? We have plans, but giving up and trading up, trading up is about taking your plans that, let's be honest, never go the way that you think it's going to go. It never goes the way that you think it's going to go. It doesn't matter how many play, plans you've laid out. It doesn't matter how much research you've done. It doesn't matter how many times you've communicated your expectations to everyone around you. Things never go to plan. And you know why? It's because your story and your plans are small. But God's plans and his story is bigger and better. And if you're willing to not give up, we're not saying push all of your uh, uh, cards into the middle of the table, and we're just done with the whole game. We're not walking away from the game. That's not what we're saying. We're not giving up, but we're trading up. And we're saying, God, I'm trading in my small little plans that I think are going to go the way that I, that I I hope that they're going to go the way that I have everything planned out, and I, I hope that my kids turn out okay, and I hope that my marriage continues to be stronger. I hope that it gets better. Hope is a great thing, but we know and if we trade in those little plans of ours for a, for a role in God's bigger story, then there's sweet surrender in that. And so when we put our hands in surrender, it's not because we're giving up. It's because we're trading up. Second, or, or, uh, let, me, let me point this verse out to you, sorry, before I skip ahead. Psalm 115.1 says this. This is where this idea comes from. It says, Not to us, O Lord, Not to us, not to our plans, but to your name goes all the glory for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. One of the things we do here as a team on Sunday mornings, all of our volunteers or most of our volunteers, we get here super early on a Sunday morning. We're here hours before you ever get here, ever think about coming here, deciding if you're going to come here or not. We're here, we're getting ready, and we're running through the entire service at 7 o'clock in the morning to make sure that we've got everything taken care of that we humans can possibly uh, have taken care of so that we can present God's truth to you in a way that will change your life. 
because we know that it's changed ours. And we're not just speaking to you out here. Oftentimes we're speaking to ourselves as well. And so we get here and we run through these things. And after we do the run through, everybody on our team from uh, our, our, our sound and pro presenter booth and everybody on stage and our, and our, our hosts that are out in the, the, the lobby and everybody that's here at that time for that run through, we get down here uh, in the front of the stage and we circle up and we go through and we tell every, everybody shares their name because we're an ever growing team. Uh, and sometimes you're like, I don't know that guy's name, but I don't want to be the one, the awkward conversation where I have to ask him his name, and then I go to shake his hand, and he gives me a fist bump, and that's the whole thing, right? <laughs> so we share our name, we share what our responsibility is for that day, and then I love this, something we just started doing. We say our name, what our responsibility is, and the, the third thing that we share is we are all in. We are all in. And the reason we say that is because we realize that we come in here, even us, even people that are hired by the church that are on payroll or volunteers who appear to have everything together, right? We come into a space like this, and we have our own expectations. A lot of times we show up and we're just praying, God, get me through this. God, help me to, 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 to see a reason why I'm, why, why I'm here today and hear what, I'm, what I'm doing here. And a lot of people in that circle, they truly are fired up. And they cannot wait to serve you each and every week. But some of us each week, we need to say the words off of our lips that we're all in to trade the story that we have of how today's going to go, to trade that in for what God wants to do today. And so by saying that, we are surrendering and we're not giving up. Giving up would be settling for the the story that I've made up of how how the day is going to go. But trading up and surrender means whatever God wants to do, I'm all in. Second thing surrender is, it's not giving up, but trading up. It's also not the end. It's only the beginning. You see, often when people put their hands up, like I said earlier in an argument, they're like, you know what? I'm done. This is over. I have nothing else left to say. I've said everything that I can say. Clearly, it's not getting through to you. We are done with this conversation. It is over. Or someone is uh, being pursued uh, by the authorities and they've exhausted every option. And what they do, they put their hands up and just surrender because to them, it's the end. There's nowhere else to run. There's nowhere else to hide. But let me tell you something, church. When it comes to your relationship with the Lord and your surrender to his story instead of your small one, his bigger story instead of your small one, it's not the end. Surrender is not the end. Surrender is actually only the beginning. Surrender is only the beginning, it is not the end. And here's what I mean by that. Check this out. Matthew 10, 39 says, if you cling to your life, you will lose it. Paul's right there. Every time I read this verse, I'm a visual learner because I'm like a C's get degrees guy, like I'm not super smart. And so if I could associate anything visually to a thing, it'll help me remember it. And I highly recommend that if that's you today. So whenever I see this verse, I think about this picture that I took one time of this uh, barbed wire fence. And barbed wire fences got these, like, these metal wires that are wrapped around themselves, right? And they're all clinged up next to each other real tight so that no one can get in or out of whatever they're trying to keep anyone in or out of. And this particular barbed wire fence that I saw was rusted. And I remember when I saw that, I was feeling super artsy or contemplative. I don't know what was going on. But I remember looking at that and saying, like, I feel like that rusted barbed wire fence is a lot like me. And I cling on to life so tightly that rust inevitably comes and destroys everything and it crumbles apart. You see, if you cling to your life, rust will come and you will lose it. But Matthew says this, says that that if you give up your life for me, if you give up your life for me, you will find it. Surrender is not the end. It's only the beginning. And the last thing I want to give you is this, is that surrender, surrender is not defeat. Surrender is not defeat. Some of you put your hands up and you just feel so defeated. Whether you're physically doing it or you're emotionally doing it. And you're like, you don't understand what I've got going on in my life right now. What do you know? You're just a pastor up here. Let me tell you, church, I am today right there with you. I know what it feels like to feel defeated. 
I, ha I have family struggles of my own. My parents are going through a super rough time. And it is emotionally exhausting and draining for me in every ounce that I have. And I can go on and on and tell you about it, but you know. You're in it right now yourself, or you just came out of, out of it, or you're just about to walk right into it, and you're, you can feel it coming. And man, you feel defeated. And you just feel like putting your hands up in defeat. But can I encourage you that when you put your hands up, not to be defeated? But we as believers in God, we know that there's not defeat, but there's a victory. Surrender is not defeat for us. Surrender is complete and total victory. And here's why, church. Check this out. Second Chronicles 20 says this. It says, this is what the Lord says. It says, don't be afraid. You know what I'm talking about, right, church? When you feel completely defeated, and deflated, and everything in your life just seems to be crumbling apart, and you don't understand why God would do the things that he would do. And you feel like you're just suffering, and in fact, you just can't wait to go to bed so that you can escape it through sleep. I know what that's like, church. He says, don't be afraid in that moment. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army, this battle that's coming at you. He says, for the battle isn't yours to begin with. The battle is the Lord's. The battle is God's. You see, surrender, surrender, church, it's not defeat. It's complete and total victory. And so today, what we, did, what we decided to do is we intentionally decided to make this message time super short. We're like, hey, I like this guy. His message is really quick. He's already at the end. We intentionally decided to do that, to give more time for us to respond physically in worship at the end. And you may not feel like it, but let me tell you, church, sometimes you need to express a physical response of worship, even when you don't feel like it, to remind your heart of the truth. It's the same thing that psychologists say, that if you're, if you're feeling bad, if you would just force yourself to smile by the end of the day, you actually will be joyful. You actually will be happy. It's true, folks. That's how God has wired our bodies. And in the same way, if, you don't, if you're mad at God this morning, if you're angry or distant at him for what he's done to you or the way that he's played things out in your life, and you're like, no, 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 God doesn't deserve my hands and reaching out to him today. God deserves my hands in my pockets. I'm telling you, church, if you will surrender to him and experience that victory, it'll change your heart and it'll change your mind. And it's an exercise, it's a discipline, it's something that we have to do in order to carry on. Some days we wake up and we're like, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to carry on any longer. It's in those moments, church, even more than the ones that you're, that you're filled with joy. It's in those moments even more that we put our hands up and surrender. And so what I'm asking for you today, we end every message with this. We, we ask this question, what now, God? What am I supposed to do with all this nonsense that I just heard about? What am I supposed to do with this truth of your word that, that is now supposed to change my life all of a sudden? What am I supposed to do? It's a great sermon. I laughed at that video what am I supposed to do? There's two things I want to ask you to do today. And the first thing is this. I want you to step out of your comfort zone. If you're the big screen TV person, I want you to go to the Simba position. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I want you to step out of your comfort zone because your heart needs it. And surrender today is not defeat. You may feel defeated where you sit right now. But if you would be willing to step out of your comfort zone and raise your hands and worship to him and say, God, not my story, but yours. I'm surrendering and experience that great victory. I can promise you that if you just push through that, that God will reach down and he will change your heart and he will change your mind and he wants that for you. Last thing is this, is I want you to let his love for you, whether you love him or not, I want you to let his love for you overwhelm 
your circumstances. Overwhelm those plans that you have. Overwhelm what's, what seems to be the end of, of everything that you thought was right in the world. Even if you don't feel it, I want you to push through that this morning. We're going to sing a few more songs, and in that moment, you're going to be invited to stand and sing. And even if you don't want to stand, that's fine. If you don't want to sing, that's fine too. But the one thing I'm asking you to do today is to step out of your comfort zone, let his love overwhelm your circumstances, and raise your hands up to him and to, and to surrender. God, I give up. I trade up to you. Let's do that this morning, church. God, we're thankful uh, that, we, that we live in a, in a country where we can do that. We live in a country where we can express ourselves in worship. But God, today, I know that there are people in this room who are hurting real bad. They might even be upset with you about the way things have turned out. God, I pray for boldness for them right now. I pray for boldness that they would push through their pride and push through their anger and surrender to you and lift their hands in the air to you. God, for those of us who are uh, overwhelmed with joy right now, God, let it be as if we're at the Ravens game or we just sat down to that plate of, of our family member's food. Let it be a standing ovation, an overwhelming response physically back to you because of everything that we're experiencing of you in our life. God, let us not keep our hands in our pockets. Let us worship you with our, with our strength. Let us reach out to you and to surrender. You alone deserve it, whether we feel like it or not. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we are so thankful for the truth that was shared in this message today. Please know that we as a staff and as a church are praying that what you have learned today, the truths that God has put deep down into your heart, will manifest themselves and grow themselves into something amazing. And as always, you can experience that with other believers, other people who are walking this walk of faith at ACC on a Sunday morning at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. As a reminder, please remember, you belong at ACC.